Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back from the MLG offices in New York City. I'm Axel Toss. I'm joined by Axe Lab. You're currently watching the XMG Balance Test Pro Invite, where Blizzard is thinking about making some changes. They published a series of maps, and um, this is a tournament basically to kind of see how some pro play could potentially develop on these maps, so we can kind of see what might happen if these changes are actually incurred. want to give a quick shout out to some people in the chat. You guys are awesome. Blumberry. Missing Taste 9, RTBA, LOL, Zerg Rush 2. I've seen you a bit. Bay Straight TV, how you doing? Frozen Echo. Wow. That's an amazing name. So, Fro what is a Frozen a Echo? Frozen Echo. What is a Frozen Echo? I don't know. That's a great question. I guess if you know, you, you, you're in the b middle of a giant parking lot. Okay. And then you yell really loudly, and then the temperature drops to like negative 100 degrees Kelvin or something. And then maybe the echo would freeze. Maybe? Maybe. Okay. Native 100 degrees Kelvin is pretty hard to get to. Isn't it impossible, actually? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know how else you would freeze an echo. Yeah. We need to talk about quantum physics again. Well, if you go into space, right? Okay. <laughs> then there is no sound because okay. there's no air to move around. So. What if, what if you bring one of those, you know how those actually, things... Actually, all you have to do is just freeze the air and then there can't be an echo. So, done. But then how, do, how would a frozen echo exist? Well, if you freeze the air while sound's going through it, you've got to be really quick with your oh, freezing so process. So you know how you can blow bubbles or those things, the, the, yeah. the formula? You bring oh. one of those in space, and then you yell into it to and make it blow up. And yeah. then it'll go out, and then the echo will be inside that bubble. Yeah. And then you freeze that bubble, and then it's a frozen echo. I like it. I like it. Sick. Boom. All right, here we are in game number two between Daisy and Koss. Over here in the upper right hand location of Yansu, we have the red Protoss on match point here. He is Daisy. And his opponent in the bottom left hand location, we do have, representing Team Empire, the blue Terran Koss. Of course, this is the first best of three of a very fun-filled evening. We got four in total. You know, Koss is building multiple barracks here. Uh-oh. Koss, Marines weren't changed, my friend. Um, it looks like it may be some Reaper play, um, but it, 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 Daisy spotted it with a probe, and he had to abandon it. Um, I do think he was planning to go double racks Reaper. Wait, is he still? He's still going double racks Reaper. Oh, it's a fake cancel. Now, Daisy thinks... That he's going to go straight to command center because uh, his his plan was spotted. Wait, what did he cancel? He canceled the barracks on the outside. Oh, uh, yeah. And then he rebuilt it just on the inside. So he's still going two barracks and he's hiding both of them. Uh, and wait, wait, Daisy spotted. Oh, no, he no. didn't. Oh, he just barely missed that. He's one guess. He's a reaper. So he, he's going to think it, it, it's a one racks reaper expand. One racks reaper expand, but it's actually two racks. Reaper. Reaper death push. Not really death push. Yeah. The what do you call a squad of reapers? Um, I think you call them uh, a squad or a platoon of reapers, depending on the number. Platoon. Okay. Platoon is that there's a lot. Uh, a squad, I think it'd probably be more accurate with the numbers we're going to be looking at. Okay. How about let's say once there's past 10, we'll start calling a platoon. Oh, wow. I don't really know how those numbers convey into StarCraft. Terms, I don't think. Do you think he'll go up to 10? I don't think he'll go up to 10. No, I think 5. 3 or 5. Most, yeah. um, but the, the thing is, is that, I mean, Daisy is going to have at least a stalker. Oh, wait, but look at this. Daisy's uh, stalker went out to protect the pro building Nexus. So the Reaper's in the main here. There, it, it hasn't been able to get another kill past that scouting probe yet, though. In fact, oh no. This game is going disastrously for Koss. When, I mean, you're, when you're going for a heavy Reaper strategy, it is remarkably important to keep every single one alive. Now, Koss could have purposely lost that Reaper, so his opponent doesn't know about the Rat Master Reaper play. What do you think about that suggestion? It could be. It's a sophisticated... Yeah, because look at this. The Stalker's going to push out across the Because Daisy thinks it's a one Reaper expand. So he's like, okay, I killed the Reaper. Now I'm free to go across the map. But wait. Here's the problem, though. There's more. Is that Koss has to send the Reapers back home to defend. Because if yep. he didn't, what would stop the Stalker? At least he kills the Stalker. Yeah. But the chances of him actually getting done, damage done across the map very small. As Warp Gate should be done. Oh, no, Warp Gate's about 70% of the way. This is a good map to kind of poke in and periodically pick off a probe or two from the expansion. So as long as he keeps the Reapers alive, you know, and you can poke in here in the main. There's actually, this is uh, probably the best Reaper that's uh, Reaper map used in every map pool right now. The only better one would be Star Station, which is, you know, in about half the map pools. Forces a photon overcharge as well. 
Oh. So he loses it for another Reaper. It's no. Just... Hey, can I jump down there? That'd be sick. Oh, no. You can't jump down there. It's too far. I feel like that's deceptive. That's actually like a million feet. Let's yeah, find this out. That's not a million feet. Yeah, you're right. Just a little edge. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, two Reapers do escape and, and they're hanging around. Uh, again, we do have the Oracle coming out from Daisy. So we'll see uh, how. Yeah, remember. Oh, look at it. Look at how fast it goes. Yeah, so look at this guy. Zooming. Z zipping. Zipping. Zipping around there. Just uh, hanging out. Uh, you know, last game, though, I, I don't think. Last game, any of the really changes we saw too much. Um, and the changes are pretty minor overall. It's not like it's a super, super radical patch. Uh, just some some small tweaks here or there. So we're going to see how those tweaks uh, affect things. Uh, but for the Phoenix Colossi composition, that remains mostly unchanged. Sure. Uh, now the Oracle's coming in here. Okay, it, it spots with one of the barracks. It sees that tech lab spinning. sees the factory timing, so it knows when Medivac's going to be a threat. And look at this, actually. It's already getting a bunch of kills. And here's where it makes a difference. It can run down SCVs much faster than it used to be able to do, uh, to do so. Yep, not a lot of defenses here for Cass. Caught a little bit off guard. Marine's going to try to pick that guy off, but he's going to stay alive. Down to 76 HP. Of course, we'll get plenty of shields back, and that Oracle will be annoying as the game goes along. Meanwhile, behind this, Daisy adding on two gases to his natural expansion, going up to a robo base. It looks like Colossi are in his future. Reapers returning home after a foray of adventuring across the map. So it's kind of very problematic here for, for Koss is that um, I think he sacrificed more in his build to get those Reapers out. He canceled the barracks. He built two barracks for a command center. He built, you know, uh, four Reapers, which is two in our gas investment. Uh, Daisy sacrificed some to get this Orc out as well, but the Oracle has been successful in, in doing damage, and the Reapers haven't really done anything. Oh. Turret. Trying to take some shots off. Yeah, Reaper up to eight kills. That's pretty massive. Daisy's up 1-0, so again, guys, Cass has to win two in a row in this best of three to move on to the next round of the XMG Pro Invite. From here, we see Phoenix is in production. So it is going to be a Phoenix Colossi composition once again from Daisy, which I'm not terribly surprised by. Phoenix is so nice in helping deal with drop play, help um, be annoying against Vikings very fast, can harass throughout the game. You know, I think we may see a similar problem to last game, whereas, you know, the, the first starboard has just got up right now, and he has to get some medivacs, and Daisy is already working on both Phoenix and Colossus at the same time. If Colossus doesn't recognize this soon... Um, oh, he might catch Orc off guard! Ooh, that would have been a nice pickoff. Going to lose some health, but not going to be killed. Trying to get him to a nice, cozy location where he can't be hit. And we're going to find out if that place exists. Yes, he found the happy medium. Until a Viking comes. Now it's a staring contest. Yes, until the Viking comes. So that Oracle is essentially doomed. Unless he zips out oh. right now. I mean, the Marines are leaving, going for this little bit of attack here, but... What kind of army does Daisy have? Okay, I mean, two sentries, two cells, it's not her As soon as you have a Colossus, a frontal attack doesn't with just pure bio, typically doesn't work too well, especially right. given that's so Marine-heavy. Oracle comes in here and gets another couple kills. Look at this guy. He's just so valuable throughout the game. A Marine's going to try to stop, but he's just going to end up dying. Uh, and meanwhile, of course, there's this Phoenix squad here, so... Not only is this attack, it's going to be hard to make it work against sentries and, and a Colossus and both an overcharge, yep. but if he commits too far, he can't just pick up and get away because the Phoenixes, Phoenixes can easily jump in there. Swoop in and take down the Metabacks before they can go anywhere. Look out for that. This Oracle's up to 13 kills. He's an instructor. He's going to teach his fellow Protoss exactly how to get things done. Still only a single starport for Koss, and in fact, he's actually just building a lot of additional barracks, so he's going to stay on two base for quite... A long time going up to five barracks, really powering units here uh, against his Protoss opponent. Yeah, I'm wondering when any third base is going to come down. Of course, Daisy might be thinking about a third base as well. Typically, once you get a couple of Colossus out, you're generally going to feel safe to start taking that third base. Of course, he's going to be aware of the lack of a third of his opponent, so he wants to make sure he doesn't die from some scary two base timing from Cass. Looks like Daisy going to be moving out, looking for an engagement. Remember, the Phoenixes are still close by, I think. Yes, the red Swooping about, the yeah, they are. Swooping her out. So Checking the airspace out. I'm actually surprised Daisy's getting a third right now. Typically playing this style, you often, uh, what you do is you, you just keep an eye on your opponent with, with your Oracle, and you just get a third as soon as they do. Uh, because if you both stay on two base, it is going to favor the Protoss yep. in the long run, uh, as it's very hard to really react around a ton of Vikings off of two base for a Terran. Uh, whereas the Protoss can just keep getting Colossi and Phoenix at a decent rate. Looks like Koss is thinking about clearing... Okay, 
Finally, that Oracle's oh. reign of terror. Oh, wait, no. A revelation goes down. Oracle's trying to get away. Well, get away. Oh, the Marines. There's two Marines. See you, Oracle. You, he almost you lived it. a good life. Lived a good life. You know, that, that almost showcased uh, the patch a bit there because that Oracle almost got away in a situation where yep. uh, earlier would never had a chance to get away. Uh, we do have a situation here where he got a, an eyeball on the Viking count with the Oracle. And you can see here, it's only six Vikings. So, uh -oh. Daisy's going to hit this timing right now where he has overwhelming air superiority. Phoenix is coming in. Guardian Shield's going down from these sentries, but there's no gateway army left, which means nothing to supplement these Colossi. Another force field going down onto the ramp. The Marines taking some shots at those Phoenixes, but Daisy needs more gateway units. A bunch of Zealots going to be warped in soon. Has a thousand minerals. Not entirely sure why he's not using it. Um, he isn't supply blocked or anything, so... Might be on a uh, cooldown for his warp gate. But backing up, this counter push from Kasha to kill him. I would almost maybe try to... Oh, oh, no! That is big. Taking out those Phoenixes and those Colossi. Uh, they can evacuate. Can they? Yeah, they, they can go up the ledge. Oh, or he, oh he's going to recall the whole army. Yeah. Um, once to save the Stalkers as well. Now, you know, Daisy was looking great. He had total air control, but he's lost many, a lot of his... How many gateways does he have? I'm confused. Uh, his gateway count's only at four okay. right now, so that's really slowing him down a lot. He took like, a third he base. He's like seven or eight, I think. Yeah, he definitely does. Uh, and now, you know, Koss is going to go try the nine to third base. Now, there aren't... Okay, he's getting more and more Vikings, but... Oh, now here's some Zealots, and with four Colossi... I don't know if Koss can take this engagement. So much ridiculous damage being done by those Colossi. Phoenix is tar targeting down the Vikings, but Daisy forced to back up. All the Zealots are gone, which means the Marauders and Marines can target down the Colossi. Photon, tar Photon Overcharge going down onto the Nexus. The Probe's thinking about helping to buffer some of this damage, but then realizing Marine shots actually hurt, backing away, waiting for those Zealots to be warped in. And now Daisy going to turn around, eventually going to hold this off, but he lost a lot of stuff. A very painful engagement for Daisy. I think he you can lost see like there, 30, yeah, yeah. 20 workers Jeez. killed by Koss, and that's that's a very, very damaging to him. Uh, I think he got a little bit too confident. He, uh, Koss, you know, he may not have had Vikings, but who needs Vikings if you have Koss macro? He just has a billion yep. Marines and Marauders. Yep. Just overrunning Colossi just by sheer weighted numbers, almost Zerg style Terran here. Uh, and now, I don't know if he can defend a third base. Oh, he's going to, you know, I feel like his army may be strong enough, but he can he get, get there, there in time? That's the thing. He might try to micro to the back. No, he's going to turn around, targeting down the Colossus, trying to keep Daisy honest. Might take down one. Yes, takes down one Colossus, but it's going to lose his entire bio army. Doesn't end up taking out the third base. So overall, I think Daisy's going to be kind of okay with that. Kept he his third alive. Yeah, you know, a decent trade. army values, I, I think Daisy definitely lost a lot less than cost. Of course, that's because cost... Uh, you know, it was fighting with mostly Marines against a, a primarily Colossi-based composition. But, Koss did force Daisy to pull those probes. So, economically speaking, you know, there's still that, that 22 probes lost for Daisy. Uh, so, even though compositionally he's looking pretty good, he's way behind in economy. He's really just got to find a way to get his probe count back up. Uh, whereas, Koss has got to find a way to find an answer to the Phoenix and Colossi composition, which means, you know, a, a lot of Vikings, basically. Okay, Koss. Okay, finally, there goes that second starport just now started. Looks like he's not done being aggressive, coming all the way out to the watchtower. Might try to push towards that third base again. SCV count is 54 to the 45 probes of Daisy. Of course, mules can be very important. That's why the income is so much higher there for Koss. Got those guys working everywhere. But the main issue is going to be dealing with this Colossi Phoenix composition. And I'm wondering when the High Templar transition will come from Daisy. Right now it feels like he's a little bit strained in the economy, so not going to make that leap. Yeah, he, he can't even afford to continue building Colossi, which is actually yep. going to hurt him as well, because uh, that's his advantage right now is the Colossi don't have a, a good answer from Koss. But, uh, you know, he's staying at four. His Phoenix production is actually interrupted for quite a while as well, and Koss finally has that third uh, starboard up. He can quickly move it over to Reactor if he wants to. Uh, and the Viking count is going to start to get a little bit out of control as long as he keeps that production going nonstop. All right. Both these guys playing pretty passive, setting up their bases, getting their economies going, working on upgrades. Now, if we're talking about these changes as the late game comes along, the only one that kind of applies, really... Um, again, guys, if you're just now tuning in, all these maps are, including, are inclusive of the balance changes that Blizzard is currently considering. For Protoss, the Oracle, movement speed increased from 3.375 to 4.0. Acceleration increased from 2 to 3. We saw a little bit of that displayed a little bit earlier. Terran, Armory, Vehicle, and Ship weapon upgrades have been combined. We see one of those being researched there at the top, so that's that's mildly interesting, but not a huge impact on this game. Big drop happening in the main, but Phoenixes are there, taking down the Medivacs. 
and these Marauders could be picked up, but no, we're going to warp in some Zealots. Oh, but he unpowers a lot of buildings here. That's yeah. pretty nice. Meanwhile, uh, this probably will get cleaned up with another warping, but there's a big engagement over here, but are there enough Vikings? I think yeah. there's, there's way too many Colossi. Kass going to try to split up those units, trying to mitigate the splash damage of those Colossi. The Phoenix is taking down all the Vikings, or at least trying to try to target those guys down, but there's no response to those Colossi. They're just getting so many kills right now. Finally, all the gateway supplementation is gone. The Phoenixes are gone. So one Marauder is left to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with four oh. Colossi, but the that's executor. not going to be enough. No! 26 Colossus, he's going to stay alive. The Stalker's going to protect that guy. 3 HP, though. It can't oh. the Marauders coming in. He can target that guy down. Nice micro there from Daisy, keeping the weakened guys back. And honestly, overall, really good micro there from Daisy. Keeping yeah. those four Colossi alive. Those are the expensive units. Those are the units you do not want to trade as a Protoss player. But Castell is a 120 to 88 supply lead, has a fourth base. His economy is pretty ridiculous. And now he's just making a bunch of stuff. He has a ridiculous production capabilities right now. He does. Uh, you know, the, the problem is that he's never really been able to hurt the Colossi count. Uh, but I think he was able to wipe out pretty much all the Phoenixes in that battle. And uh, given the fact that economically speaking, you know, Daisy's kind of in, in a rough spot, Daisy cannot really afford to rebuild the Phoenixes that easily. Whereas Koss, just due to you know his economic advantage, can crank out Vikings like a maniac. And the next engagement, as long as he hits before Storm, uh, is going to be a, a pretty good one for Koss. As you see this Viking count right now, you know it's it's not really where he wants it to be against five Colossi. But in about a minute from now, he could definitely have that count, you know, pretty much doubled. Whereas Daisy, will Daisy have Storm in time? Is a big question. Of course, Storm takes a bit to, and it, it takes a bit to go. Uh, do you see Kaz try to pull some SCVs, do some shenanigans if he can predict the timing of those, the Storm? Because that could be something that... I mean, I think that would be an amazing move, but knowing Kaz, Kaz is like, a, he loves his, his SCVs, loves man. His SCVs. He loves just <laughs> gathering minerals and spending them on units, and then yeah. he's kind of like a brute force type of guy. We've noticed that throughout the game. You know, the engagements haven't always favored him, but uh, he'll just eventually overwhelm his opponent with numbers. Uh, kind of the, the, the Zerg version of a Terran I mean, here. he has the economy right now where he doesn't have to do anything crazy, I think. Like, he's on four bases. Ghost Academy is, is halfway done, so he's able to kind of have a feel of, of what's happening. Of course, you want to have those Ghosts out to deal with the High Templar, because if you don't have those Ghosts, the Storms can, can go unopposed in a sense. But we've got a drop in the main base here, the Phoenixes. Oh, nice feedback on that Medivac. Taking him out. The clinch of the fists, some Zealots. Warped in to deal with these Marauders and Marines. Meanwhile, Koss posturing on the left-hand side of the map, looking for those anti Templar, looking for those Colossi. Storm is not yet done. This is a good timing here from Koss. Going to be targeting down the Nexus, and Daisy has no real good way to reinforce that location. So it looks like the Nexus will be taken down, but at what cost? The Storm going down. Storm is now done here for Daisy. He's going to turn around and engage. A lot of probes dying at that third location, and Koss doing a good job spreading out his units, not taking a direct fight, because now that those High Templar are here, I don't think he wants a direct fight. No, he does not. He's just going to let the small group of units die, but definitely uh, w was worth it because he traded away, you know, some of his low-tech units, and if you can see this, he's able to replace them with ghosts. Uh, he, can, he can replace them with more Hellbats, which is going to help tank the Colossifier. Uh, Hellbats are actually really, really helpful against a composition like this. You can see he did get the blue flame upgrade. Uh, he's getting that attack upgrade, which helps both the Vikings and the Hellbats mm -hmm. now due to the patch. Uh, and th this composition from Daisy, because he has so little gas and he's trying to get Colossi and Templar and upgrades, he can't really make many Stalkers. And so his, his gateway army is going to be pretty much all Zealots with, you know, a couple Archons, but it's mostly Zealots, right? Uh, and if it's mostly Zealots, all of a sudden that means that uh, the Hellbats are great at, at taking the Zealots out. Oof. Oof. That was pretty brutal, actually. Um, if and there is one spell that I wish could exist in real life, I think it'd be feedback. You think so? Yes. I would kill hmm. so many bugs. That's true. Am I a bad person? Um, I think you could kill more bugs with, like, a Hellbat. That's a good point. Yeah. But then the sa there's a safety issue because fire. But You're right. You might just burn everything with down. With feedback, you just, you just end them. Okay. Nice EMP on the High Templar there. Daisy looking for an engagement. Zealot's going to be charging in. Storm's going down underneath the Vikings. Those are pretty good storms, but Cass able to micro most of his stuff away from that. More storms going down. And look at all these Vikings that are about to get taken out. Only two Vikings left, very low in health, but only one Colossus remaining. And Daisy going to GG, realizing his opponent has way too much stuff. Remember, he lost his third base behind that. He had no economy at the third base, realizing he had to get damage done. He had to put some sort of dent into this four base economy of Cass, but Daisy wasn't able to make that happen. Cass is too good with his positioning, and most importantly, Got those ghosts out in time for those EMPs and just was able to overwhelm Daisy. 
Yeah, you know, it was just a, a numbers thing. Even that last engagement, I think Daisy, you know, he got a lot of great storms off. That position wasn't bad for him. But it's just it's just the way Cost plays. I mean, if he just gets out of control of the unit production and and he, his upgrades were looking good there too. The Hellbats tanked a lot of damage, uh, which allowed Hellbats are great to yeah. include in a composition like that, and they're very supply efficient too. Oh yeah, they're uh -huh. only if you think about it, they're actually like one of the best tanks in the game for only 100 minerals and, and two supply. Uh, yes, they're they're melee and they can't stim and back away, but um, Cost normally doesn't really kite anyway. He kind of just shoves his units at his opponent. Yeah, and if we're playing that style of Terran. Uh, just the Hellbats are almost an ideal unit. Just you just want to like shove, shove stuff at them forward, him. and yeah. them they'll be thing. cost efficient. They'll yeah. they'll do their job for you. Uh, okay, so now we have a tie game. We have a tie series, I should say, in this first best of three of the evening, guys. It's Daisy versus Koss in the XMG Balance Test Pro Invitational. We got four quarterfinals today. Daisy versus Koss right now. Game three coming up. <laughs> 